In this video, I'm going to show you the top 10 reasons why scuba diving is a dangerous sport. The truth is, scuba diving isn't that dangerous as long as you have the right training. I encourage you to take an open water diver course in order to get the right training before you start scuba diving on your own because these 10 things could get you in deep water. If you'd like to know more about scuba diving, please leave a message in the comment section below this video, like this video, subscribe to this channel, and check out my other videos. Let's dive in. To kick us off is mask squeeze. As you descend, the pressure in the water is going to increase, and that means that any airspace is gonna get compressed. There's one major airspace that you have, and that is the air around your mask. As you descend, the air in your mask is gonna get compressed and that creates a squeeze or a vacuum effect. And that vacuum effect is a little bit like having somebody sucking on your face. What tends to happen is the blood vessels are drawn to the surface of the skin and they give you bloodshot eyes and what looks like a giant hickey. To alleviate mask squeeze, all you need to do is breathe out through your nose. That's the very reason that scuba diving masks have a nose piece, is so that you can breathe out through your nose and that'll equalize the airspace in your mask. During your dive, you're almost certainly gonna need to clear your mask of water. When you clear your mask, that'll automatically force air into the mask and alleviate or equalize that mask squeeze. One of the mistakes that new divers make is to tighten the mask so that no water can get into the mask. On almost every dive you do, you will get some water into your mask. And so so you need to be able to clear your mask. If you want to know more about how to clear your mask underwater, I'll link a video up here. Next up is nitrogen narcosis. Nitrogen narcosis is an anesthetic effect that nitrogen gives you the deeper you go. In fact, they call it the martini effect because every 10 meters you go down, it's like drinking another martini. The effect wears off as quickly as it comes on as you start to surface. This is one of the reasons that you need to take an advanced diving course. On your advanced diving course, you'll go down to around 30 meters and certainly below 18 meters where you'll start to notice the effects of nitrogen narcosis. Nitrogen narcosis in itself is not dangerous. However, divers who are under the effect of nitrogen narcosis may not even be able to spell their name correctly, let alone be in control of their faculties. That means they could do something stupid and dangerous. And so nitrogen narcosis is not at the top of our top 10 list, but if your buddy does something crazy while they're at 30 meters, it can become quite dangerous quite quickly. Next up, we have carbon dioxide poisoning. When you're standing on the beach and breathing normally, any air you breathe out will have a proportion of carbon dioxide. At the surface, that doesn't matter because any carbon dioxide will be blown away on the breeze. Over years of holding your breath while you're swimming, it's only natural to try and hold your breath while you're underwater. When you're on scuba and you hold your breath, this is called skip breathing. When you're scuba diving, the effect of carbon dioxide is amplified and can give you a headache. The simplest way to avoid carbon dioxide poisoning is to continuously breathe and never hold your breath. Next up, we have oxygen toxicity. Who would have thought that oxygen could be toxic? The reality is 100% pure oxygen can be toxic. In fact, if you breathe 100% oxygen for an extended period of time, you could end up having seizures and even die. The increased partial pressures that you experience when you go scuba diving means that 100% pure oxygen can be toxic and even lethal in as low as six meters. Partial pressure of oxygen in normal air means that by the time you get past 60 meters, the effect of the 21% oxygen in our breathing air is the equivalent of breathing 100% oxygen at the surface. This is one of the reasons that scuba divers need to limit the depth that they go down to. And in fact, 40 meters is the recreational scuba diving depth limit. As soon as you start going below 40 meters and approaching 60 meters, oxygen will become toxic and you could end up putting your life at serious risk. Next up, we're running low on or out of air. Running out of air is one of the biggest concerns that new divers have. Running out of air is one of the reasons that you'll have training on your open water diver course to use your buddy's air supply in case of an emergency. Running out of air shouldn't be a problem because you should keep a constant eye on both your own and your buddy's air supply. However, accidents can happen and it is possible for equipment to malfunction, which might leave you in a situation where you are running out of or low on air. On your open water diver course, your instructor will teach you about the rule of thirds, which says that you should have one third to get into your dive, one third for your dive, and one third in reserve, so that if anything does go wrong, you've got enough air to make it to the surface safely. Next on the list is burst eardrums. Like we've discussed with mask squeeze, as you descend, any air pockets are gonna be compressed. One of the air pockets that you body has is the airspace in your eustachian tube. As you descend, the air 
when your eustachian tube is going to get compressed. If you don't equalize that airspace, you could end up rupturing your eardrum. If this happens, you're quite likely to have a rush of cold water into your inner ear. That means you'll become very disorientated, as your inner ear is what controls your balance. If this does happen, the most important thing to do is to let your buddy know that you have a problem with your ears and that you need to surface immediately. You might not be able to recognize which way is up or down, in which case you'll need to take a look for your bubbles and see which way they're heading and follow them to the surface. In order to equalize your airspace while you're descending, all you need to do is block your nose and blow gently against your blocked nose. That'll force air into your eustachian tube in order to equalize that airspace. Next on the list is air embolism. Air embolism gets broken down into two different things. One is microscopic air bubbles accumulating in your joints and body tissue. As you're ascending, the surrounding water pressure starts to decrease. That means any microscopic air bubbles will start to come out of your tissue and joints. If those microscopic air bubbles start to grow too quickly and congregate with each other, they could form an actual air bubble. Those air bubbles are most commonly going to get stuck in places like your joints. This is commonly referred to as the bends. The other type of air embolism that you could experience is when an air bubble forms in your circulatory system. An air bubble that forms in your circulatory system could end up in your heart or in your brain, which can lead to some serious medical issues and put your life at risk. Other air bubbles could form under your skin or in your chest cavity. The only way to combat an air embolism is to go into a recompression chamber, descend to depth and ascend really slowly while breathing a higher concentration of oxygen. The higher concentration of oxygen will attach to the nitrogen bubbles that are forming in your body and help you to breathe them out naturally. If you suspect that you or another diver has an air embolism, make sure that you don't go back in the water and get to a recompression chamber as quickly as possible. Next up is a burst lung. When you're descending, the pressure is increasing and so you need to equalize those air spaces. The opposite is also true. As you ascend, the air in those air spaces is going to expand. The air in your mask or your eustachian tube will expand and escape naturally. However, if you're at depth and you take a deep breath of compressed air and then ascend to the surface while holding your lungs, your lungs won't be able to expand like a balloon and so they'll rupture and any air in your lung could escape into your chest cavity. It's simple enough to avoid a burst lung, just breathe continuously and never hold your breath. Even while you're ascending, if you're breathing naturally, any air that expands in your lungs will escape naturally through an open airway. Next up is the environment. There's two elements to the environment. One is the ocean environment and two are the animals that are in that environment. The easiest way to get into trouble when you're in the ocean is to get into a current that you can't escape. You're either going to use a current during a drift dive or you could use a rip current to get out to a dive site and conserve your energy for the dive. Sometimes currents can be useful and sometimes they can be dangerous. The types of dangerous currents that I'm talking about are downward currents or upward currents. The other element to environment are the animals that you'll encounter. One of the first questions I'm always asked is, are we going to see a shark and is it dangerous? In the almost 3,000 dives that I've done, I've never had a problem with sharks. Of course, it's not to say that sharks aren't dangerous for scuba divers, but you're far more likely to have a problem with other animals in the environment. Things like a stinging blue bottle, or picking up a shell that has a poison spike in it, or standing on the spike of a sea urchin. The sea is a dangerous place and without having the right training to recognize and avoid these conditions, you could end up in real trouble. Probably the most dangerous thing in the ocean and the one that I'm most alert to are other divers. All the dangers I've listed already are reasonably predictable. I know that I need to equalize my mask, I know that I need to avoid currents or use currents to my advantage. The one thing that's most unpredictable are the actions of other divers. When a diver becomes panicked, the first thing they think about is getting to the surface as quickly as possible. Often, that means that they pull off their mask, pull their regulator out of their mouth, and try and swim as quickly as possible to the surface. This can be dangerous not only for themselves, but also for any diver that gets in their way by trying to assist them. At the top of my list of dangers for scuba diving is divers themselves. After all, if we never went diving, none of these dangers would ever be a problem. I hope you've learned something about the dangers of scuba diving. It's important to take an open water diver course at your local dive center so that you can learn to recognize these dangers and avoid them before they happen. If you found this video useful, please leave a comment in the comment section, like this video, subscribe to this channel, check out my other videos, and I'll see you in the next video.